now it's time for RTB 101. This is the segment where we talk about practical questions to help train you to share your faith with friends and family more effectively. And joining me for today's conversation is physicist Dr. Jeff Zwerich. Hi, Krista. It's good to be here yes. again. <laughs> <laughs> we, always get, we always get comments about our height differential. What people don't know is I'm standing on eight inches of foam right now. So. I, I'm not. So. <laughs> But, um, you know, one of the more odd jobs that I have here at the ministry is fielding questions that mm -hmm. come in, and sometimes I'm pushing them your way, and it seems like there's no end of questions related to the beginning of the universe, and mm -hmm. I thought it would be good if we took some time to, to kind of address that question of, did the universe really have a beginning? So mm -hmm. why is that even a question? Well, I mean, I... I, I kind of see two aspects to it. One, from a Christian perspective, as I look at Scripture, the beginning seems pretty important. I mean, you got in the beginning is the way the Bible starts, and yeah. numerous places talk about that, that God is the creator, things have a start. Uh, that, that's just the way the Bible seems to describe the universe. So I would expect to see that scientifically. Uh, the flip side of that is that when you look at it from the scientific perspective, the idea that there's a beginning to the universe has this connotation that there's a beginner. And so some people want to avoid that. It has so certain that, theological it does, implications. It does, yeah, okay. So. so is that, uh, do you see in the scientific realm efforts to try to get around having a the universe having a beginning? You know, yes, I do. And I see it from two motivations. One are people just say, well, if there's a beginning, that's kind of, what do we do to investigate that? Whereas uh, others, you know, so there's kind of a benign, well, let's just look for things that don't have a beginning because that gives us more time where we can look at things. And others are looking for, okay, let's get, how do we get around the beginning so that we don't have a beginner? Uh, so I see both aspects of that. But yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of models out there where we say, okay, how do we have a universe that matches what we see but doesn't have a beginning? Well, what are some of the more interesting proposed solutions to getting around the beginning? You know, it's, it's interesting because it's varied throughout the last hundred years. I mean, even Einstein, when he first recognized that this seemed to have a beginning, an expanding universe had a beginning, or general relativity implied that, he, he put in a constant so that it was static because if it's just this way all the time, it could be eternal that way. And so that was one way of doing it. The other models tend to go in, in one of two classes. Either there's the uh, things oscillate back and forth. Uh, you know, there's some sort of cyclical nature to where, yeah, there's a beginning, but it just kind of expands, collapse, or something like that. Uh, and then the alternative other model is things have just always been this way, one way or the other. And there's obviously a lot of little subtleties with each of those models and how that plays out. But those are the two general classes. Do you find that uh, people's worldviews are often connected to what model they are advocating for, like, mm -hmm. you know, that sometimes they have a, a vested interest in the universe not having a beginning. I, I think there are definitely some like that, yes. Not uh, everybody. Yeah, and so you can't say, oh, you're avoiding a beginning, therefore you're against God or something. But the, in general, generally, yes, people, what they hope to see aligns with their worldview. I mean, I'm, I'm a Christian, I'm a scientist, but yeah, I, I have a kind of a vested interest in there being a beginning to the universe. I think I can do that rationally and within the confines of what is the data demand. But yeah, I want that. And I think a lot of people do that as well. Now, I know you've been working on a book mm -hmm. related to this topic. So as you've been digging deeper into this, what have you been finding? Uh, the two things I found, uh, one is a little bit frustrating, is that there's not a final answer to this yet. I mean, I think there's a lot of evidence to point towards a beginning, but there's some ways, given what we know and what I would expect as a physicist, that leads to models where you don't have a beginning right now, where we just don't have the data to test one way or the other. And so I find that a little frustrating, and I find Christians find that a little frustrating, if I'm honest. We want definitive answers. It is. It would be much cleaner if it was yeah. like, oh yeah, this is the way it's got to be. On the other side of that coin, though, as I look through the last hundred years, scientists have proposed numerous models that say, oh, there's no beginning. And as we investigate the universe more carefully, the universe seems to keep pushing us back to there being a beginning. Uh, so the eternal models, those don't work for various reasons. The cyclical models seem to not work for various reasons. And so even though there's this uncertainty, I would expect that the universe is ultimately going to push us back to having a beginning. So do you feel like kind of history is on our side, mm -hmm. that the ev evidence keeps accumulating that the universe does in fact have a beginning? Maybe there's a little bit of wiggle room, but you think that with further investigation, it, the case is going to get more solid? That's the way the history has gone. And, and you know, I think Big Bang cosmology is a great evidence for a beginning. 
precisely because people have looked for so many ways to get around the implications of the beginning. And as they've investigated all the options, they've been ruled out or pushed into small corners. And so it's the actually the investigation of the universe that actually gives me great confidence that the universe really does have a beginning. Now, I know that the idea of the universe having a beginning is a critical kind of foundational piece that we at Reasons to Believe use in talking to our non-Christian mm -hmm. friends that, look, this corresponds to the Bible, how the Bible describes mm -hmm. the universe. Do you think that's still a good argument? Is that still a good way to go, given this little ambiguity that I, you there know, is? Yes, I do. And, and the way I would say it is, you know, if you're going to come in and say, oh, science proves there's a beginning, you're going to run into problems with a statement like that. But if you go and you say, you know, it seems like as we look at the universe, the universe the data that we have seems to push us into models that have a beginning seem to be the best idea. That's a very defensible, very reasonable, in fact, I think probably the best way to say it. And so the idea that the science points to a beginning is not really that controversial a statement, even though we do have ways where we could maybe envision not So just don't beginning. overstate your case. Exactly, yeah. You don't want to use the word prove, yeah. but maybe you want to say points to. Right. Okay. Well, and if I'm if I'm honest, anybody, anytime somebody comes up and says, oh, this proves that, my first thought is, well, I'll show it doesn't. You know, and so you've <laughs> got, you, you got me arguing with yeah. you instead of engaging with you. Very good. So if you soft state it or state it reasonably but confidently, then you're going to draw people into conversation. Very good advice. And I want to encourage you to check out Jeff's blog. Just go to our website and search impact events.